students welcome to the session today's session is again one of the very very important session when it comes to your mbbs training in internship and then when you become a clinician any clinical side you are in whether you are in surgery medicine pediatrics orthopedics and for that matter some other clinical branches also you are going to encounter the nerves their presentations their affections partly examination and some investigations definitely so but if you are in orthopedics pediatrics probably surgery and medicine you will be dealing more and more with management but others at least you need to know the basics of a peripheral nerve injury not only peripheral nerve injury but in this session we will also cover partly the brachial plexus injuries we will try to understand the peripheral nerve their brief anatomy as i love to do every time because i always believe that if you have understood the anatomy and pathogenesis like how the disease evolves it is extremely easy for you to understand the clinical features you can figure out what investigations should be done and uh, what will be the likelihood of you know prognosis and treatment which will work better in which so that's why the brief anatomy and pathogenesis is extremely important then we will also deal with individual nerve injuries of upper limb lower limb and then some special nerve injuries which are usually not asked as a part of your mbbs viva but they are important because you do see them sometimes in clinics and definitely for your mcqs and we will finish this entire discussion at the end with couple of you know slides and couple of uh, material on the brachial plexus injury also so before i move on to the um, the nerve injuries proper i'll give you an overview what are we going to discuss we'll discuss the brief anatomy of a peripheral nerve then we'll discuss how a peripheral nerve is injured what is the response of a peripheral nerve after the injury which we call it as valerian degeneration followed by regeneration there are some classifications associated with the peripheral nerve injuries like um, sedans classification and sunderland's classification among the two you need to remember this sedans classification easy more practical how do these clinical um, what are the clinical features of the peripheral nerve injuries you remember each peripheral nerve has got three functions to perform sensory motor autonomic so if a peripheral nerve is injured these are the three functions which are going to get hampered sensory motor and autonomic traditionally not much of autonomic disturbances and their measurements are discussed in the management but we are going to discuss the sensory and motor investigations for peripheral nerve injury depends upon what is the etiology of the nerve injury so let's say if it is traumatic then we discuss the x ray ct scans and mris and if let us say it is a cold pathology something like a hansen's disease then we have to think about the investigation pertaining to hansen's or diabetes or some lead poisoning and what all but we will focus this this session mostly on traumatic nerve injuries rather than any other nerve injury for all the nerve injuries especially peripheral nerve injuries there are two important investigations electro diagnostic and i'm sure that most of you know that is nerve conduction velocity which will tell you that how the nerve is behaving after the injury how it is conducting whether it is conducting or not what is the amplitude and what is the velocity of the conduction what is the level of injury where is the injury how severe is the injury and lastly the nerve supplies the muscle which is actually giving you the action so whether the muscles are affected or not whether there is any recovery in the muscle or not so on and so forth so that is known as electro diagnostic study in form of ncv and emg and then we chalk out the plan of treatment and certain factors what can affect the prognostic uh, prognosis of a nerve injury so if you look at a single peripheral nerve after from the spinal cord this is the section of the spinal cord this is the ventral root which arises where there are axons which have arisen out of the anterior horn cell this is the anterior horn this is the posterior horn and this is the lateral horn you see here this is the lateral horn lateral horn 
especially in the thoraco dorsal T12 L2 is responsible for the sympathetic outflow though we are not going to discuss here just to remind you because we did discuss this in the spinal cord injury this is the posterior horn which receives all the sensation from the entire body entire body your visceral and the somatic sensations are received in the in the dorsal horn and from here it will be relayed to the brain in the sensory area ventral horn is responsible here the this this um, red dots you see these are anterior horn cells which give rise to the axons which the minute it comes out it goes into the ventral root which is further joined by the white and gray ramus communicans which is the paravertebral sympathetic ganglion together these two form the spinal nerve together these two form the spinal nerve and there's one more characteristic of the dorsal root that the dorsal root has got the ganglion what ganglion it is the same sensory sensory nerve whose ganglion is outside which we call it as a dorsal root ganglion once the spinal nerve is formed it divides into two ramus the ventral ramus and the dorsal ramus so ventral ramus supplies entire ventral trunk ventral part of your trunk and all the limbs so in limbs in limbs all the limbs whether it is upper limb or it is a lower limb it is always the ventral ramus it is the ventral ramus whereas on the back side of the body that is the dorsal of the trunk it is the dorsal ramus where the skin and muscles of the back are supplied so i'll just remind you again the spinal nerve is formed of the dorsal root and the ventral root ventral root it is also joined by the paravertebral sympathetic system through the white and the gray ramus communicants it forms the spinal nerve and spinal nerve divides into two parts ventral ramus and the dorsal ramus ventral ramus is going to supply all the limbs upper limb and lower limb as well as the ventral part of the trunk dorsal ramus supplies the dorsal part of the trunk skin and paravertebral muscles ramus has got sensory if whether you see this the ventral ramus or the dorsal ramus it has got the sensory motor and the autonomic fibers which supplies the skin glands visceral and the somatic motor now these basic things are extremely important for you to understand the nerve you know uh, nerve pathophysiology the clinical features and manifestation it's not like you start the peripheral nervous system examination and just go into the axillary nerve and radial nerve the wrist drop and the clawing no 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 that's not the way because peripheral nerve injuries or for that matter neurological pathologies are very mathematical if you have understood the first concept it is extremely easy for you to get the larger concept along with some minor you know specifics you can apply let's say wrist drop claw hand those things are very easy to apply but unless you know how these nerves are formed what do they supply which area they supply it's difficult for you to uh, do the further examination now each nerve fiber if you see each nerve if you see it is surrounded by a loose connective tissue here that's known as endoneurium so this is the individual nerve fiber which we call the axon it is surrounded by the endoneurium here you see these dots 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 these are all individual fibers so they are all surrounded by the endoneurium which is also known as neurilemmal sheath group of many nerve fibers form a fascicle which is surrounded by the perineum so this is a group of fibers which are surrounded by the tissue known as perineurium and then multiple fascicles multiple fascicles form a nerve which is surrounded by the epineurium now this is again a part of your mcq that what is epineurium what is perineurium what does it supply what is a nerve fascicle um, as far as our discussion is concerned we will keep our discussion limited to the axon easy to understand but you need to know these terminologies what is endoneurium what is perineurium and what is epineurium epineurium is around the entire nerve so if you say radial nerve so this could be radial nerve so what surrounds the radial nerve proper it is the epineurium but the radial nerve will have many 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 fascicles and what surrounds each fascicles is the perineurium and in the each fascicle there will be many many thousands and thousands of single nerve fiber and each nerve fiber is surrounded by the endoneurium now from the gross motor so we saw what is spinal nerve then we went to a single nerve and then now we come to the unit that is axon now the anatomy of axon is extremely important and i'm sure that you have read this in physiology to understand 
the pathophysiology what happens after the injury to the individual axon or an individual nerve so unit of a peripheral nerve is an axon an axon if you see here it has got a cell body typical cell body with a lot of dendrites then it has got here this is axonal cylinder this is axonal cylinder which is surrounded by the myelin sheath that is the myelin sheath and this blue dot what you see is the Schwann cells and finally outside this all outside will be covered by the endoneurium or the neurilemal sheath. Exonal cylinder once it starts from this place it ends via the dendrite through the dendrite it ends in the motor end plate or whatever organ it is going to supply in case of sensory organ and this cylinder is responsible for the anti-grade and the retrograde conduction from the cell to the peripheral dendrites and from the peripheral dendrites to the cell. This one you can also think like a like a highway it's like a highway with a single road okay so any breakage here any breakage in the exon or for that matter any breakage in the on the highway or any disruption in the highway any block in the highway is going to affect the function of the entire highway or for that matter the function of the nerve so let's say these are the two district district one district two you have a highway here if this highway is obstructed or blocked it is going to hamper the function of the either ends with understanding of the peripheral nerve anatomy, axonal anatomy, one more thing I would like to tell you here, uh, if we go back to this slide, one more thing you need to learn about this particular slide is, um, so you can compare the uh, peripheral nerve, it's like an electrical wire. <laughs>